Hi, everyone. It's Joe Venary, the host of Fit Insider, the show where I talk with the entrepreneurs, executives, and investors who are redefining the business of fitness and wellness. Today, I'm joined by Joey Gonzalez, the CEO of Berries, a premium boutique fitness brand. In this episode, Joey shares his experience with the company, from customer and instructor to chief executive. We talk about Barry's X, their new digital fitness platform, as well as Joey's vision for an omni-channel offering that includes partnering with connected fitness brands. Plus, we discuss the importance of building a values and mission-driven company culture. A quick reminder before we get into today's show. Every Tuesday, we send a weekly newsletter filled with insights and analysis on the business of fitness and wellness. Join other decision makers and industry operators by subscribing at insider.fit.co. Let's get into it. Hi, Joey. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to today's conversation. Uh, definitely excited to chat with you. And I think, you know, obviously a lot of folks are familiar with the Barry's brand and you've built a, a stellar brand and company. But I, maybe to kick things off for folks who don't know, or maybe to get a little bit of uh, insight straight from you, can you introduce yourself and tell us what's happening at Barry's? Sure. Uh, my name is Joey Gonzalez. Uh, I'm the global CEO of Barry's. Barry's was really the first uh, boutique fitness studio of its kind. There is a real man named Barry who I call the mad scientist who came up with this incredible workout combining interval cardiovascular on treadmill with strength training using dumbbells and other equipment on the floor. And this was really before you know high-intensity interval training was a trend. It was all the way back in 1998, very first studio in uh, in West Hollywood. So now flash forward to 2021, we are in 14 countries around the world and still smaller in terms of size. We have 80 studios, which seems big, but most of the global fitness brands are in the thousands. So we have managed to stay uh, somewhat boutique. And I think people would also identify Barry's as being one of the most sort of premium experiences out there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for your specific involvement, have been with the company for quite a while, both as an instructor and, you know, I have an experience firsthand, but, uh, you know, from time to time still teaching classes, so very much engaged. Uh, how has, you know, your relationship and experience at the brand kind of evolved and maybe what does that look like in the global CEO role today? Yeah, so... People do refer to me as CEO founder, even though technically I wasn't with Barry when he came up with the idea in 1998. When I discovered the business first as a consumer, I completely fell in love with it, which I think is you know, so advantageous to, to, to have that opportunity to work for and help scale and build a brand that you already were obsessed with uh, is really a gift. I came in when Barry's was sort of just a small, undiscovered concept in LA, uh, and dedicated my life to you know, and you know, every penny I had to to expanding the business and testing its portability. And so I moved around. You know, I teamed up with Barry and John and Rachel Mumford, who were the three founders, and started to move around different parts of the country from 2009 on. Uh, first, San Diego, then New York City, and really. Starting first as a as an instructor way back in 2005, just to rewind, and then moving into management, and then obviously starting to invest and move around the country. Eventually, stepping into a COO role. Um, but even while I was handling operations for for the country, uh, I was also teaching still 14 classes a week. So I was a very busy boy. And finally, in 2015, you know, we had grown organically through our own sort of investment. Uh, and reinvesting into the company, the four of us. And then finally in 2015, uh, we took on some private equity uh, investors. And I that is the time at which I moved into the global CEO role. Yeah, you were, you were in the thick of it and continue to be as both you know, the industry is evolving, uh, the modalities, the, the kind of competitive landscape, you know, all of which I'd, I'd like to touch on a little bit. But you mentioned that being in 14 countries 80 locations. Um, to your point, not huge, but certainly not at the scale. Now we see a lot of folks coming out, especially in the studio space. How do we get to thousands, if not 
I don't know, ten, tens of thousands, but a couple thousand studios as they think about scaling that platform. How has your approach differed in terms of we want to open, we want to maintain that premium brand? There's certain kind of locations and maybe cities that are more suitable. What goes into that and how are you thinking about it going forward? Yeah. So we have always been a culture first organization. And you know, I think that comes from the top, obviously. It was at the very beginning, Barry's vision and at the heart of it, it was really all he wanted to do was create this really intimate place and space for people to feel safe no matter who they were and to get an amazing workout. And I really connected to that. And so when I started to scale, and especially I'd say post-2015, once we really fueled the engine for growth, I was very cautious about expanding too quickly. Uh, And luckily, I had very patient investors who trusted me and who trusted that the company was growing at the cadence by which you know we could handle it while maintaining the culture. And so I think that's the most important thing. It, it hasn't always been top of mind for us to be premium. It's always been to maintain sort of the magic of what Barry's always was, which is relationships, community, the efficacy of the actual workout. You know, it's a results-driven workout that isn't for everybody, obviously. And so I think probably towards 2016 or 17, I started to work with an executive coach who really helped me nail down, okay, now what I have ahead of me, right? the expectation of growth uh, and the degree to which we want to scale is very clear. But now I'm starting to need help on how I maintain culture while doing that. And we went through uh, a pretty long process of identifying our mission, our vision, our values, Uh, instead of that coming only from the executive team or only from me, it came from the entire organization. So we surveyed people at every level, whether they were working at the front desk or instructors or facilities or at the fuel bar, we asked them what they loved about Barry's uh, and what made it the place that they chose to show up to every day. And the output of those surveys, as well as you know, a lot of input that the executive team and I gave, were these mission, vision, and values by which we continue to run the business today. And that really has been you know, our guiding light as we've gone from, I think it was probably 30 to 80 studios in three years or so. And we're continuing to grow at that pace. You know, we have another 15 studios that we're set to open over the next year, which is a much smaller number than what would have happened if the pandemic hadn't taken place. So yeah, that's where we are today. Yeah, it's it's certainly interesting and important how you take, you know, sometimes I think as a leader within an organization, you think there are certain things that are maybe resonating with the consumer and the employees and the culture that you're building. And then you start talking to them and you realize very quickly, hey, that maybe these are different things or we didn't see this or we we missed maybe the obvious. Did you, in going through that process, how did you know that experience play out inform you as a leader? And were there any surprises in terms of what those, you mentioned the surveys and really nailing down the mission and vision were there surprises or was it fairly similar to what you had expected? To be honest, it was exactly what I expected. There, were, there weren't really any surprises. And I think it's because, you know, Barry's was, felt like a, a, my baby, you know? So I felt like I knew the business and the brand so intimately by that point. It had been, you know, already 12 years. So I thought I knew what it was that made it special and sort of what made us tick. Uh, but it was very reassuring, obviously, to to hear it played back, you know, from so many different angles. For sure. And then there's the flip side of that, which obviously getting the culture right, making sure that everybody's aligned internally, making sure that you're serving the consumers in the way that they expect, both from the experience and then also the outcomes. But then you mentioned taking on investors, right? Having them having that patience. How do you basically take the flip side of this culture experience team building and say, here's the business objectives we need to meet. How are you thinking about now plotting that course towards the business objectives 
pre-pandemic maybe and post-pandemic and how you do that in a way that both fulfills your vision for the company, the team's vision, the consumers and outside investors? Yeah, well, I think the most important thing to do is have a shared vision, right? They have to be in sync with one another, which is a big part of how you select a partner. And so just to give you a little more context, when I and my partners went through the auction process in 2015, the questions that we were asking our prospective future partner were meant to establish alignment in the future of the company and the vision and the direction which we all plan to head in. So there weren't really any surprises, right? As we so, and and by the way, North Castle, who are my partners, didn't even give us the highest valuation. They were the ones that we were most aligned with, not only from a vision for future, but also the values piece, which is so important. And so I think that's to answer your question as succinctly as possible, I think having shared vision at the front end of making any deals or, or handshakes is the most important thing. Sure. Having that alignment and then mapping and uh, moving forward in that direction, then you alluded to it in talking about the, the number of studios potentially that would have opened if it wasn't for the pandemic. Of course, have to kind of touch on that a little bit. We go back over a year ago now, almost a year and a half ago, and COVID starts closing down studios. Immediately, I think across the landscape, we see people pivoting to, you know, whether it's some type of Instagram Live or Zooms or some digital remote uh, training just to keep engaged with consumers, both stay top of mind and, and help everybody kind of cope with this. What was going through your mind when this was happening? What was your, your messaging to the team and then the, the action plan you put into place? Yeah, so Barry's is a 24 hour, seven days a week kind of business, 365 days a year. And we have never closed. Like, we don't even close on holidays. We're packed on holidays, right? So we've literally never closed our doors. And then all of a sudden, every studio across the globe shut down in March of 2020. So you can only imagine what was going through my head. I had absolutely no idea how long it was going to last or how severely it would impact the business. And that was, you know, I'd say the, the like moment for me that really provided direction was when I reminded myself of the guiding light. You know, I sat down and just thought, okay, what's our mission? What's our vision? And what sort of values can we execute those things from? And so immediately realized like the most important thing for me to do right now is to reconnect with our clients. So to somehow figure out a way to turn those red lights back on and, and, and reconnect with them because they need it now more than ever, right? Like the thing that people get from Barry's, it's not just a workout, but it's, like I said earlier, relationships, it's love, it's, it's support, it's sanity. And so right away, we went live on Instagram and just taught a class from our Hollywood studio. I taught, I think, probably like a 20-minute class with no expectations and ended up having over, I think, 20,000 people join globally for that class. So it really showed us, A, you know, people are out there and waiting for more. <laughs> and B, this is definitely our time to flex our innovation muscle and start to think about other ways to connect with our community. Because digital, our digital strategy had really, the foundation had not really been laid, right? And so this really gave us no other option but to sort of to sort of start down that path if we wanted to maintain the connection. So that was sort of the external experience. Internally, there was so much happening as well, right? I mean, you have all of your revenue shut off overnight. You're going through rifts, reduction in forces, which are incredibly painful, especially for people who lead through culture and with a culture first mindset. And so I did my best just to communicate honestly and transparently with all the different sort of employee populations and hosted so many different calls throughout the crisis with just different subsets of our employee base to ensure that they felt supported 
and informed on the state of the business, which changed, you know, day by day and week by week. And so we did this Instagram live thing for a couple of weeks while we sort of started to build our vision for the future of Barry's Digital, which was born not even a month after we started the Instagram lives. And we started to leverage Zoom uh, and offer a cam sharing experience for our clients, wholly immersive to feel like they were taking a class as much as they could, right? And to see and be seen because every other product out there was really just a one to many. It was one person coming, you know, live to you or video on demand and and teaching thousands of people at the same time. But we wanted our people to feel seen. And so the cam on was a big piece of that. Uh, and our instructors, you know, we would really start to give feedback in the moment. I would say things like, you know, Joe, that's not a deadlift, you know, soften your knees, flatten your back. And people really responded well to having that experience. And they also loved seeing each other. Uh, and flash forward to now, you know, we've just launched Barry's X, which we like to think of as the first product of its kind that really embraces all of these aforementioned qualities. Yeah, definitely want to touch on what you're doing now on the digital side. I think a couple of really cool initiatives. But as you're going through that process, and this is something, you know, we did see folks kind of pivoting to digital, whether or not that groundwork had been laid. To your point, you don't really have an option and you start to figure it out. And then as you do that, this larger strategy comes into place, especially with a more kind of premium option like Berries. How did you think about pricing as it factors into this? Because uh, one of the things that, that I thought about immediately as we saw companies having to move to digital was, does this digital experience commoditize the in-person experience that you're maybe paying more for, now you're going to pay less for it at home. Obviously, it's much different and lots of people still crave that in-person. But how did that factor into what are we building, how are we pricing it, and what is that going to look like in the long term? Yeah. So we did do a lot of discovery around that. What was great about our process was because we were going through a crisis I think people were extremely forgiving, right? And so we were able to innovate and get real feedback in the moment from our clients, not only around the experience that they were having, but also around what their expectations were in terms of in terms of pricing. And where we landed eventually was um, we have a series of pricing options for our clients that actually don't differ that much from our studio experience. We have, of course, the video on demand content that people can access for a pretty affordable amount. It's $39 a month. And in that membership, you actually get four live classes with it as well. And everything sort of goes up from there, the same way it does in studio. And it goes all the way up to, you know, if people want to take 30 classes in a month, there's a membership, you know, for them. All of these people, again, get access to the VOD workouts. And so the way that we could kind of price a premium on our memberships is because it's a completely different model, right? You will never be in a Barry's class with a thousand other people. We cap the attendees in order to give our instructors the opportunity to provide that sort of in-the-moment feedback I've spoken of earlier. So that's where we landed on pricing and how we got there. Right. And in terms of the offering, you mentioned the, the video on demand, some of it being bundled with in-person. What does that Barry's X experience look like? How did you think about differentiating it in the, the landscape of digital and at home? And how has it been going since getting launched and getting it out there? It's been great. We did a soft launch with the expectation of only sort of focusing on our clients and messaging the Berries community about the exciting product. And we are sort of allowing a few weeks to take place to get feedback and to really, uh, you know, that's how we, we've always done things to really hear from our trusted audience. What are the things they like, don't like, love, et cetera? How do we augment and improve the process? 
before we necessarily invest a ton of money in our marketing efforts. So that's the stage we're at right now. And the results have been amazing. I mean, we have been really surprised, I think, by how many memberships we sold in the first two weeks. It's it's super new, Joe. I don't know if you know, like we literally just launched a couple of weeks ago. For sure. Yeah. I've been following along. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been really exciting for us to see that response. Um, and now we're just starting to put together our first series of surveys that are going to go out to our you know first thousand members or so. Yeah. It's really exciting. And to see, you know, we hear so much now, it seems like a buzzword, but this idea of hybrid offerings or omni-channel, however you want to think about it. And this being, we, you know, you don't know what the demand or the, the size of the addressable market is really because it's, it's untapped and it starts to kind of build on itself. People who now will supplement without at home, who may be working out more during the week or month because they have this option at home, still going in person, of course, vice versa, more people going to the studio, but then supplementing with at home. How do you think about kind of the future of whether it's specific to berries or in general across the landscape, this idea of omni-channel or hybrid fitness? Yeah. So I think what COVID has done is really give rise to that hybrid client. I think for us, because digital has now become such a big part of our identity, we really want to be delivering an omni-channel experience that's consistent no matter where you take it, right? So we want the Berries X experience to feel very much like what you're getting in the Red Room. The idea being, how great would it be to be able to stay connected to one brand, right? To one experience through all of those different modalities, whether it's you know in a studio or at home in your own garage or at a gym. And so that's what we hope to be the solution to. Right. We hope that people, and we're not there yet, but eventually we can offer, you know, a membership price where you can take your X classes, you can take your studio classes, you can do VOD if none of those times line up for you, but you're still working out with the same community and you're still working out with the same instructors, which is actually as we sort of talk about our talent. It's what gave birth to our strategy around how we deliver our live product. And what I mean by that is today we have three studios, New York, LA, and San Francisco. And if you want to take a Barry's X live class, we will be coming live to you from any one of those three studios. The longer term vision is actually to have many more, right? So picture a studio in Dallas, a studio in London, a studio in as many of our markets as possible so that our instructors are able to sort of cross over in from one of those universes to the next. Um, that is so in line with who we are and what the vision is behind Barry's uh, in terms of really continuing to deliver on this you know, promise of a global community. Yeah, it's an exciting vision. I think unique, especially among the different operators I've talked to thus far, is how do you continue to build, you know, so many times when we hear the word community and think about it digitally, it's like, yes, the shared cam or high fives or leaderboards, but this idea of getting to know the talent in the different cities, maybe taking classes with them in person, seeing them on, you know, the the video on demand or the the live. I think that's maybe a little bit of, of an innovation that we'll start to see more of uh, as we figure yeah. out what this digital well, omni-channel offering ways. is. It works as an in-studio consumer who loves, you know, let's say Alicia's class, right? But then has to either move or is just on vacation and can still join Alicia live on Barry's X, right? And then it works the opposite too for somebody who lives in Cincinnati and is a regular member of Barry's X and falls in love with, you know, Tommy in San Francisco and, you know, just people in different cities all over the country. And then when they travel, they can actually take those people's classes. So I think it's really interesting and fun and, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. 
Yeah. Another piece of that puzzle is a partnership with uh, Form, which is a connected at-home exercise company, similar interactive workout mirror. They also have a strength training model. Previously had Trent Ward on the show to talk about what they're doing, but you guys teamed up. What went into thinking, hey, we're going to put Barry's content in this device. And also, which I thought was an interesting step, Form is going to be sold in Barry's locations. What does that partnership look like? It's been great. So we've really been seeking out, because Barry's, we chose to, to develop agnostic software, we've been looking to partner with different hardware providers. Uh, and this was really the first partnership of many, right? And this is we identified what we thought was the best in market product. And it has been really exciting to launch Barry's X at the same time that they're launching this product. Trent's vision is really great. The actual form mirror is spectacular. I think he uses the same manufacturer as the iPhone, and it's just really seamless and touchscreen. And we've been working you know, together with them at their studio to film all of our video on demand, which has been really great. So once again, I'd say, you know, just to, to revisit what I said about Northcastle, a big part of what went into that decision-making was sitting down and better understanding Trent and his team's mission and their vision, right? And the values and what they prioritize. And luckily, I think we made the right choice because it's been incredible. And you know, I'm actually one of the featured VOD instructors myself and can tell, tell you that like being on set with them is always just a really great experience. They're, they're a wonderful organization. Yeah, you, you kind of mentioned it there, but maybe first or first of many as you think about getting into other devices and, and hardware manufacturers. Is there anything you can uh, allude to on that front? Is this something that you're considering the wheels are already in motion and we should look out for as maybe other partnerships roll out? Like, do I have any other partnerships to announce? Maybe not announce if you you know are able to do that, but even is this part of a strategy you would like to implement or are these things already in place? It's just a matter of time and, and you guys will be announcing more kind of hardware yeah. partnerships. So we're having a, a number of different conversations we see berries as you know being best in class in terms of fitness content and we want to be able what we want is for people to be able to conveniently take berries x so we're talking to different hardware providers think like you know treadmill etc to actually have berries as a native app on their hardware and some of those conversations are further along than others. And we're really excited about some of the prospective partners, but there's definitely more to come there. Yeah, it'll be exciting to watch. I think as we get towards the end of the conversation, wanted to get into maybe this broader landscape and, and some of the partnerships that are taking place and just general consolidation, M&A, a couple of companies kind of uh, poised to go public. It's been, you know, this... I think a lot of hype and a lot of investment capital going into the at-home space and digital, obviously. But at the same time, it was maybe in 2020, before the pandemic, it was kind of rumored that Barry's was for sale. And then you guys brought on some additional capital in the same time. Uh, I think Barry's Cycling launched. So where does it stand in terms of how you're thinking about you know, the future funding options, financing, uh, studio concepts, and just general roadmap as we're looking ahead with that, given all the, not just competition, but focus funding coming into this category. Yeah. So we have a number of modalities now that we offer. Berries, obviously the original concept is the treadmill weights, but we also do something called Lift, which we've been doing for years uh, in about half a dozen studios in North America. We launched one as well in Soho in London. And because of COVID, we were actually able to sort of scale that concept in the outdoor format. So a lot of different markets that hadn't experienced Lyft before had the chance and people have just loved it. And it's basically 50 minutes of weightlifting. And it follows the same days of the week programming. So, you know, Monday's arms and abs, Tuesday's lower body focus, et cetera. You mentioned Ride, which was another sort of 
test for us right before COVID. We launched two studios, one in New York and one in LA, and they were both pop-ups. So always sort of meant to be temporary. Our utilization rates were crazy. They were like over 85%. So pe- people really loved the product. It was definitely differentiated. It's a, it's a the same thing as our OG concept, except using spin bikes instead of treadmills. And so you're kind of on and off a bike doing your interval cardio, and then you're doing your strength training, once again, following the same days of the week. In terms of you know where we stand with our investment partners, North Castle was imminently getting ready to exit the business back in February of 2020. Um, we had just started to run a process, which was super competitive. And obviously, COVID came at the worst possible time. It actually, I always say, was the best time because I can't even imagine what it would have been like to navigate the past 18 months with a new partner. So I am so grateful that that didn't take place because North Castle... And you, they say you know, life was so great for all four or five years, but you really get to know your partners when the you know, S hits the fan. And I wasn't that surprised to find that they were as amazing as I had thought and, you know, stood by berries and, you know, put culture first all throughout the pandemic. And so here we are sort of hopefully coming out on the other side of it um, with North Castle, you know, and its investors and shareholders, obviously looking to exit the business, but not necessarily that quickly, right? Like we, we have a shared goal of getting to pre-COVID attendance. And I will tell you that I think because the brand has done what it has over the past 18 months, there has been a lot of excitement around us already coming back to market. So we have had some inbound requests from different private equity groups asking when they might have the opportunity to, uh, uh, to put their best foot forward. So we're excited about the future. We're excited about Barry's X. We're very excited about our continued expansion, both domestically and globally. And yeah, lots more to come. Yeah, a lot to be excited about. Um, many things to be on the lookout for. And that was going to be my my question as we wrapped up. But you hit on a lot of those, those kind of high points. And we'll certainly be following along uh, with that for folks interested in keeping up with all the various developments, maybe trying digital or just generally keeping tabs on what you're working on. Uh, what's the best place to follow along? So the best place to find me is Joey Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z is my handle on Instagram. I have, you know, post most of my personal and professional content there. And then of course I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, and if you're not already, you can follow Barry's just B-A-R-R-Y-S on Instagram as well. Awesome. I hope everybody does that. And, and Joey, thanks for taking a few minutes today. It was a great conversation. Excited to uh, share it with the listeners. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks everyone for listening to today's episode. For more from Fit Insider, visit insider.fit.co and subscribe to our weekly newsletter for insights and analysis on the business of fitness and wellness. Then go ahead and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. See you next time.